Welcome to Job Search Stories. I'm Jen, a career coach and your new go-to gal for all things career advice. And I'm Gina. I'm an expert at all things job seeker here at Indeed. And together, we're going to help you navigate this crazy world of job searching. So there's a part of the job search process, which a lot of people would say is not very fun. What are your thoughts on networking? Blech. <laughs> You're like, it makes me want to vomit. Literally hate it. Like, I don't think it's fun. I don't think it's enjoyable. No. Like, I barely want to talk to people I know. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't want to talk to people I don't know. Like, and also I've had like some really cringy, horrible networking, like event situations. Like once I went to a networking event that ended up just being like a party. Like everybody was just partying. And I was like, I brought business cards. <laughs> like, so I just I mean, like, that sounds like a great networking event. I mean, well, was it going to help me get a job? No. <laughs> I actually think this is why a lot of people don't like networking, right? Me included. You included is because, you know, when we think about traditional networking, mm -hmm. going to an event, it's very outcome oriented. Yeah. Like you go with the expectation that you're going to meet somebody, you're going to make that connection, you're going to leave with leads. Yes. Right. Yes. And yes, so yes. when that doesn't happen, then comes the disappointment. I mean, I've had some good networking experiences. Like I just met people who I'm like cool with now. Yeah. And that's nice too. Like meeting people in the same field as you or the same industry as you, because making that connection could lead to your next opportunity. Do you do a, a good informational interview? Are you a fan of those? I've done like a couple, like when I was working at certain companies, uh -huh. like I was saying, kind of like getting opportunities on different teams. Um, so maybe, maybe because yeah. it's worked, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's worked for me. So, but I have had some like informational interviews that like went so poorly because I was just like not prepared and mm. just wasn't good. But I think it's- You didn't have a list of questions? No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> was that was that a foul? Like, was I supposed to have like so many You're questions like, prepared? Let me borrow 20 minutes of your time for this very unguided conversation. To just chat. <laughs> to chat about how you can help me in my career. Yep. <laughs> and that's probably how I started it. How can you help me in my career? So tell me what I could have done better. Give me the tips. Career coach me on oh, right now? how to have a better informational interview. Okay. So you definitely want to go in with questions, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, so that was my first mistake. Yeah. Cool. I mean, that was an area of opportunity. Okay. Um, definitely do some research on the person, right? Mm -hmm. Think about why you selected them. Are they in the role that you're interested in? Yeah. Are they working at the company you're interested in? Yeah. Look for a commonality, mm -hmm. right? Look for that one thing you might be able to bring up to break the ice, like an icebreaker yeah. to say, hey, I noticed this in your experience. Like, oh, I went to college there too. Or, oh, yeah. I worked with this person too. And then kind of start to ask questions about their career trajectory? What was their journey? How did they get here? What's it like working in that role or mm -hmm. in that company, in that industry? Yeah. And like really use that type of information to kind of piggyback off of and express what your interests are. Yeah. So why is it beneficial for you to talk about them? Mm -hmm. And what's that information that you want them to leave knowing about you? Yeah. So again, when the opportunities come up, <laughs> they're able to think, Gina would be great for that. So if anybody out there is like me and they're listening to this, like what tips can you give to people who just truly hate networking? I would say just try to shake this idea of traditional networking, mm -hmm. right? Like try to drop this expected outcome of you're going to leave with something really tangible yeah. and just look at it as an opportunity to build some relationships and make yeah. some connections. Again, it's like if you're telling people in a natural setting, like what your goals are and mm -hmm. what you're good at or what you might be looking to do, that really kind of plants a seed to where as those opportunities come up, yeah. they reach out to you. I mm -hmm. think everybody can really speak to getting a job on the hidden job market, which is really through a referral. Yeah. Right? Like I, there's so many stories out there about friends or colleagues reaching out to you. That's how I got my job at Indeed. Yeah. I had a former colleague from UT reach out about a career coaching role. Nice, nice. And they're yeah. like, yeah, I think you would be great. And so that's how I interviewed and made that transition over. Yeah. So I think there are a lot of successful stories like that. One activity that I would always recommend are skip level meetings. Mm-hmm. 
really setting that time for to meet with people that are above even your manager's level, yeah. like working with the same department and however, you know, it fits best. Don't just throw time on their calendar. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like ask. <laughs> hey, I would love out. to chat with you. Yeah, yeah look for yeah. office hours, you know, whatever it would be. Mm-hmm. But definitely realize that you can network within your own company yeah. and just let other people know that you're open to to do new things. Thank you everyone for listening. And if you found any of this advice helpful, make sure to subscribe and rate the podcast and also leave us a review wherever you listen to podcasts and we'll see you next time. 